Hi viewers and welcome to the channel and today we're going to learn how to create a linked chain like so. We're going to be using the sweep in the part workbench, the ray tools in the draft workbench, but we're going to be using the split curve to space these along one single path. So we've got two arrays here that link together and in the middle we have a split curve that places those two arrays along the right path. We're going to be understanding how the split curve works to allow us to adjust the spacing of this chain as we see fit. If you like what you're seeing, please subscribe to the site. I also have a Ko-Fi or a coffee site that you can donate to if you so desire. And that's at ko-fi.com forward slash mang0. I also run a Patreon where you can subscribe and get extra content. And that's at www.patreon.com forward slash mango jelly solutions. Any money that's kindly donated will be used to span the channel. So I know this is a Curse Workbench tutorial. We're going to start off in the Sketcher. And we're going to sketch the first part of the chain. So I'm going to create a new document and a new sketch. And we're going to place it along the XY plane. We're going to be using the slot. I'm just going to create a simple slot across here, like so. I've got the auto constraints on, so I've constrained it to this line. So you look down here, I've got the auto constraints on. I'm going to hit escape to get the mouse pointer back and use these two points. Click them both and make them symmetrical to the center using the symmetry. And we don't need this constraint here because we've got a symmetry constraint across here. So this will override this constraint. So hit delete. And that's symmetrical to the center. I can place a width across here or I could use a length or width across here. So do this at 50 millimeters and we'll give it some height as well. And we're going to go about 30 millimeters with the height. So this will create our first link and we're going to place a profile around here. So I'm going to hit close. So now we've got this and I'm going to click the top line or can be the bottom or the top and we attach a sketch to this. So we're attaching a sketch to actual edge. Click on the sketch. This pop-up will come up, sketch attachment, and it's normal to edge. Hit OK. Now, if we look to see what's happened, what's happened is that we've created a sketch that's normal to this edge. So the sketch is in front of us, and the sketch we've attached it to is projected away from us. We're going to create a circle in here. So I'm going to attach it to the center, create the circle. This is going to be the profile of the link, of the chain link. Hit escape, click on the circle, and we'll give this some diameter, say 10 millimeters. When we sweep this around, this will create the link. Hit close, come over to the part workbench, and we're going to select the profile. We just rename this as profile sketch. And this we're going to rename as link sketch or chain link sketch. Now we're going to sweep this profile across here. So we use the sweep tool, utility sweep. Let's give yourself a bit of space to come into view full screen. The sweep is also available on part and coming over to the sweep. This gives us some extra options here. So we need the available profile to be passed into the selected profile. So click on the profile sketch, the circle, and press the right button. Next, we'll select the edges for sweep. So control selecting all those edges going around there and hit OK. We swept that profile across here now can come into the sweep and actually hide this profile, but we're going to leave the chain link available. We're also going to select the sweep, and press the space bar to hide the sweep. I want to create a path for this link to follow now. So when we create an array of this link, we'll force it along a path. For that, we'll select one of these edges. So one of these circular edges, select that, come over to the sketcher, if you're using the sketcher, we can just select that as well. 
like so. Select the sketch and we'll get our sketch attachment come up. And we can see we've got a number of options here. And I'm going to go for concentric. What will happen is that will place it that point of that diameter. So the center point of this arc or circle, if you think of this as a circle, there's the center point. That's where let's place that. I'm going to sketch the path in now. You can use the B spline tool. Auto constrain it to the center. And we'll create some kind of path for the links to follow. Hit escape to get the mouse pointer back and we've got our path. Hit close. Now we've got this sketch and the path sitting there. Let's bring back the sweep. Let's rename the sketch. Right click, rename. Path sketch. Now we're going to come over to the Curse Workbench. And if you haven't got this installed, come over to Tools, Add on Manager, and you'll be able to find it in there. The reason why we're in the Curse Workbench, because we're going to be using the Split tool. The reason why we need to use this is we need to split this curve here into three sections. I could have done this in the path itself, but if I use the cursed workbench, we've got some control over where the splits will actually split the line. We have to split the line because we're going to be needing two paths. So one for this link here, and then the link rotated 90 degrees and using a secondary path so the links actually link up together. So that would require an offset along this path. And we use the distance in the splitting tool to do that. So we come over to the splitting tool or come up to curves, split curve. This will split the curve and you'll see we've got two splits in here. We need three. Click on the split curve, look at the distance and just add some distance in here. So we can add 20 and you'll see a little dot appear. So we can see how this splits now. Let's increase this up. We'll change this at a later date. We also got to make this value the minus of this. So come into the three dots and type in minus 53 millimeters in here. Hit OK. Now we've got three sections. So we're going to create an array along this edge and this edge. Then we'll create a second array along this edge and this edge. We now need to come into the draft workbench. Draft workbench has a number of array tools. So modifications array, and we're going to use the path link array. Because we're not going to be using the fuse, we can use this link array because there's going to be a number of links in there which can have an ability to slow down FreeCAD. So this one will be much faster. To use the link array, we'll click on the sweep. Control click the edge that we want to pass the array down. So following this line here, so we've selected the first one. Control click the second one. Come up to modifications, array tools, path link array. You can see them being passed along that path. Come over to the path array. Come down to the line, make sure this is equal to true. That will line it along this path. And look at the line mode. Drop this down at the moment. This would be the same as being tangent. So we've got our first link there. Let's hide that path array. Span the path array. Click on the hidden sweep. Press the spacebar to show it. And then we'll do the same. Click on the sweep. This time selecting the second section of the split and the last section, control selecting all those. So those are all selected now. Modifications, array tools, path link array. You can see what's happened. This is now offset from here to here using this edge and this edge. Come down to the alignment, drop this down to true. Now you can see the align mode is the same as the previous path array. 
And you can see how those are linking up there. Drop the line mode down to Frenet, but make sure we're on the right path array, because at the moment we're not. So let's come over to the other path array. Line mode, Frenet. And you can see how that lays along there. Bring back the other path array. And we can see that I was quite lucky in that it was actually correct where I placed the split along there. If you're not so lucky, click on the split curve, look at the distance, and if we press the up arrow to move the split, you can see the point has moved. Hit Control R, and you can see how that's moved. So we can adjust that split to where we see fit. So I'm going to go about 55 across there. We also must make sure that the value is the same as well. So this value here, and we use a minus 55 on there as well. Make sure it's millimeters, hit OK. Control R, that's moved that back a bit from there. So that's how to make a chain using the part workbench, draft and curves workbench. So the only tool we've used from the curves workbench is the split curve. So remember the curves workbench is not just for nerve surfaces. We have a number of tools in here that can be very handy when coming to do stuff like arrays and manipulating lines and curves in your models. This technique could be used for anything that has an array where you're using multiple models along a single path, where you need to split that path into up to separate paths to allow for something like this connection here or this spacing. So I hope you enjoyed that video. I hope you found it useful and I'll see you next time. If you like what you've seen, please subscribe to the site. I also have a Ko-Fi or a coffee site that you can donate to if you so desire. And that's at ko-fi.com forward slash M-A-N-G-0. I also run a Patreon where you can subscribe and get extra content. And that's at www.patreon.com forward slash mango jelly solutions. Any money that's kindly donated will be used to expand the channel. Thanks a lot for watching and subscribing and I'll see you again soon.